Calathea, the Goldilocks of the indoor jungle, I would call her. She has high standards, but plant friend, let me tell you, if you meet her at her standards, if you meet her where she's at, she is going to reward you with a variety of the most amazing foliage I have ever seen. Colors you didn't know could exist in real life, in nature, and leaves that look like they were hand painted maybe by the gods. So she's a tricky girl to take care of, but I'm going to hook you up with everything you need to know about how to have this gorgeous genus of plants thrive in your home. Growing joy. Welcome to Growing Joy with Maria. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I am here to help you successfully care for plants and grow more joy in your life. Today, we are diving into one of the genus of plants that always catches my eye at the garden center, always makes me want to bring them home. We're making this video in partnership with Proven Winners, all about celebrating the beautiful genus of Calathea. Now, before we dive into how to care for them, I feel like we have to have a moment to discuss how do you pronounce this name. I hear people say Calathea. I hear people say Calathea. I don't care how you you say it. Use the proper plant Latin. I appreciate you doing that, but I call it Calathea. So you can roast me in the comments if you want. So one of the things I love about Calathea is the wild colors that this plant has. You can see in this one leaf, there's pink, there's white, there's light green, there's dark green. And then one of the coolest things about Calathea, I think, is the purple undersides of the leaves. Can you see that plant friend? It is so beautiful. And I think of all the genus, Calathea has the most variety of colors and patterns that I've seen. I'm just obsessed with them, plant friends. I mean, look at this. It looks like Mother Nature literally painted this with a watercolor brush, the Calathea orbifolia leaf. Can you even, with the silver iridescence of this leaf, sadly, we, we lost one in transit today, but she's going to make a great demo for us. Calathea make great statement plants. They are great for a pop of color amidst a sea of really green, like if you have a very green houseplant collection, a Calathea with a little bit of white or with a little bit of pink, it's like a nice pop of color and texture amidst a, a plant collection. And I just love them. I just love them. Here's the thing I love the most about them, okay? Come closer. These plants fall under a group of plants called prayer plants, the Marantaceae family. So that's Calathea, Stromanthi, Maranta, and Sinanth. All of these plants fall under the prayer plant family, and that's because these plants do a very special thing. If you've ever seen a plant being called a prayer plant, this is why they get their name. These plants open and close their leaves throughout the day. So if you've ever seen one of those cool time-lapse videos where the plant is moving their leaves, they move their leaves up at night and then they open their leaves in the day. So you see this beautiful movement and because of it, it's like your hands are praying. And I just think that's very sweet. And I think that prayer plants in general have been calling to me a little bit more because, you know, I wrote a book, Growing Joy, on plant care and self-care. And in hard times, returning to gratitude is really important. And I think prayer plants are a beautiful, gentle reminder to, you know, have this moment of gratitude when you see when you see them throughout your house. So if you're needing a gratitude practice, bring some prayer plants into your life. Whenever you see them as you're walking through your home, stop, say thank you for something that you're, you know, you're thankful for in your life and keep moving on. But anyway, enough mushy gushy stuff. Let's dive into the cold hard facts of this genus and how you take care of it. Okay, so when we talk about plant care with any genus, with any plant, I think it's really important to think about where these plants grow in nature, right? Like where do they grow outside? What conditions are they growing in outside? And then as their plant parent, how can we best replicate that indoors? So Calathea are growing on the understory of the rainforest floor. There's a few things to note and understand uh, before diving into how we replicate that. So this is a clumping plant. If you notice, this plant does not grow taller and taller and taller and taller. It's not a climbing plant. It clumps. It grows outward. So you can see this one plant has a bunch of different clumps and it'll still keep popping off more little pups around there to fill this pot out. I think that's really great because Calathea, as they grow, they become these like really lush, robust plants. I've had multiple plants do that. They've, you know, I've gotten them as like tiny little cuttings. And then in a couple of years, they're like filling a six inch or eight inch pot. So they're clumping at the bottom of the jungle, just as, you know, an interesting fact. In the rainforest, so humidity is going to be the name of the game with caring for these plants, not going to lie to you. And also the rainforest floor is pretty moist. So these plants do not like drying out. So now that we know that that's where they live in the rainforest, let's dive into the different care tactics you can take for having these gorgeous plants thrive and not shrivel up in your homes. 
All right. What light is good for your calathea? When we think about the rainforest, we're thinking about the fact that these plants are not ever experiencing direct sunlight. They're getting dappled light that trickles through the, you know, the overstory of the rainforest. So that means that these plants like medium, they can tolerate low light, but I like to say medium light. I say medium light with calathea, even though you'll often see them advertised as a low light plant, because I think even the understory of the jungle outdoors, there's still more light volume than the light volume in our house. So I think a big issue with a lot of people is that they overestimate how much light that they have in their home. And then they think that they're giving the plant the light that it needs and it doesn't. So I would say aim for medium, gentle, indirect light bright indirect light for these calathea. And a few things to note, if your calathea has a lot of white variegation, be mindful that these plants are not going to want direct light at all. So these plants might be a little bit more sensitive to light. And if you have calathea that have like a lot of pink in the leaves, a lot of light pink, like there are some varieties of calathea that are like almost all pink, rule of thumb with all plants. If you see pink or light colors in a leaf, that plant is going to need a little bit more light because it has less chlorophyll, so it's harder for the plant to make its food. But a nice, gentle, bright, indirect light, medium light, these plants can tolerate some lower light areas of your home. Lighting is so subjective based on your home. If you struggle with understanding what your natural lighting is in your house, I have a free worksheet. You can download. It takes you through measuring the light in your house for three days, and by the end of it, you'll understand what your lighting situation is. If you need that support, you're welcome to download it in the show notes. Another fascinating thing that I've heard, and this is something I've heard, I'm pretty sure it's true, is that the plants that have these purple undersides of the leaves, this is an adaptation for many plants that grow in the understory of the jungle, in the rainforest floor. It helps the plants like reflect light back up. It helps them absorb more light when light is so scarce in, in the bottom of the rainforest. And I just think that's kind of cool. Watering. So there's going to be two things that you need to nail to have calathea thrive in your home. That's watering and that's humidity, okay, after obviously putting them in the right light scenario. So watering, this is where the Goldilocks that I was talking about comes, comes into play. So with watering, this is where you're going to see issues come about with your calathea. They don't like wet feet. So they don't like wet feet means like sopping wet soil. They don't like their roots, which are their feet, to be sitting in sopping wet soil. When it sits in sopping wet soil, when the plant has wet feet, the plant roots basically rot and root rot is, is a big issue for a lot of houseplant deaths. They also don't like drying out. So let me tell you, when this calathea arrived at my house a few days ago, I thought to my finger, the soil felt moist-ish. It wasn't too wet. And I thought, okay, I can give this plant one more day. And then <laughs> I went to bed and I woke up and this entire plant had shriveled up inside of itself. All of the leaves curled. It was so sad. And that's because I realized, oh my gosh, the soil is actually drier than I thought. I needed to give it a huge water in my sink and I gave it about 12 hours and now it's gorgeous and luscious and open the way it should be. So because calathea are the Goldilocks, they do need, you need to find the sweet spot for moisture in the soil so that it's pretty evenly moist. I suggest keeping your calathea in a highly trafficked area of your home. You do not want to put these plants on like the top of the bookshelf that's really hard to reach. You want to be able to pass these plants plants on like a daily, if not every couple of days, because you want to be able to gently be sticking your finger in the soil and taking a moisture check. If you struggle with moisture, um, like understanding soil moisture, I totally get it. This is all really confusing when you're beginning, right? So there are a couple of tools I wanted to suggest to you. Number one, there's this really chic looking soil probe that they make at Greenery Unlimited. You can stick this soil probe down into the soil and then pull it up. And it pulls samples of the soil from different areas of the pot. So you can see, oh, the bottom of the pot is wet, the top of the pot is dry. You get a sense for how, you know, how, how much the plant has dried out. And I think it just looks really chic in your little plant toolkit. Um, you can also play with moisture meters. These are things that you stick into the soil. It tells you on this little reed reader how moist the soil is. It tells you kind of where the sweet spot is. And you can go about, you know, take a week 
water your plant and then take that moisture meter and check it every single day so you see how the moisture changes in your plant on a daily basis. These plants are going to need water because they need to stay evenly moist. You know, at least probably on a weekly basis, you need to be checking on them. Note for the wise, if you go on vacation, you're probably going to need a plant sitter for more than a week. I'm leaving my house for a month. I'm going to have a friend come over once a week to be checking on all of my plants to make sure that everybody's watered and the humidity is enough. And one last thing about calathea. Now, this is something it's hard for me to advise you on because it's something I don't believe in, but I have to do it because it's true, is that calathea like filtered water. So I don't like it when my plants drink fancier water than I do. And I used to really resist this, but calathea are very sensitive to some of the harder minerals in water. And if you have a calathea and you're watering it and you're noticing either like white residue on the leaves or you're noticing a lot of browning, it could be a water issue. So I would say if you've been struggling with calathea in the past, you might want to try filtered water. So these ladies get my Brita water. I drink from the tap, but they get Brita water. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's move on to humidity. So humidity. I'm going to be really honest with you. You should have a humidifier. You need 50 to 80% humidity for Calathea to be happy. And in most homes, that's really hard to achieve. If you struggle with understanding what your humidity is, I didn't know my humidity levels in my home for like the first three years of having plants. A hygrometer, once again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, this is a great way to track your humidity in your home to get a sense of what the actual humidity you're dealing with is. So when I got a hygrometer, I realized that my home can drop into 18% humidity sometimes. These calathea would be so miserable there. I highly recommend if you have them, make sure that you have a way to manipulate your humidity to try and get it in that 50 to 80% sweet spot. I don't suggest spritzing your plant leaves to increase humidity. These leaves are so large, if water that you mist stays on them, it can cause a fungal infection. You can potentially mist the air around the plant, but that mist is going to evaporate and it's not going to give you consistent humidity levels. The only other thing I would recommend, obviously when you group plants together, it can kind of create a little bit of a microclimate, but I saw a hack on the internet that I thought was really clever. If you have a plant that's a pot within a pot like this, and your pot, the outside pot, the cash po, is a little bit larger than the inner pot, you can take moss and stuff it in between the inner pot and the outer pot and then water that moss. That moss will evaporate and keep a nice little humid area around your plants. So that's a method I've been experimenting with with some plants. Um, also for moisture retention, you can like put a little bit of moss on top of your soil. The moss will get moist when I go on vacation. Sometimes I'll do that to try and like help, help with the moisture of the soil. But anyway, calathea are really going to thrive in humidity. If you have a calathea that gets brown even browning on the edges or curls, it's probably a humidity problem. Leaf curl with calathea is a big issue and it's literally the plant like going, help me, help me, you know? So it's normal for the plant's leaves to go up and down, but when those leaves curl in on themselves, that's a sign that you've got a problem. That's what I saw with the calathea I was telling you about that I needed to give a big water. So just be mindful of that. Fertilizing. Fertilize your plant when it's growing. You know, you'll look online and you'll see fertilize your plants in the growing season, which is the spring and summer. But I think with house plants, the growing season, if you're growing under grow lights, you know, if you're growing in an interior room, sometimes your plants might not pick up on, you know, what's going on outdoors, depending on what your environment is. So I think if you see new growth, support the plant with a little bit of gentle fertilizer. I love liquid fertilizer that I just put in my watering can and then water my plants with. So that's what you should know about fertilizing. And then troubleshooting. I mean, we talked about the leaf curl. We talked about the filtered water. What else do I want to tell you? Ah, if you get droopy leaves, so the opposite of the leaf curling in, if you feel like the plants are really drooping, that's probably a water issue. The plants need water to have turgidity for their stems. So if you see a droopy plant, give it a really good water and then watch it come back to life. It's really fun. One other thing that I feel like I have to blow my own spot up about. Listen, if you have calathea, you're probably going to have a moment where one of them gets browning edges, right? We all do. We're all human. You know, we all, our radiators kick on, like things happen. I'm going to tell you, plant friends, you don't need to toss a plant out if it gets a little bit of brown edges. Take some snippers and here's a little brown edge. I have totally done this before. You're not hurting the leaf as long as you're just trimming it a little bit it's okay. I will literally cut a new leaf tip in my calathea. You're not a bad person. If you want your plants to look good, just give them a little shave. This leaf obviously has plenty of green to allow for photosynthesis. So just like give yourself a little trim. I would say put the plant in what it needs to thrive, like give the plant enough humidity. But if, if you mess up in your learning curve, 
Let's give it a little trim. Okay. Now we get to dive into a little species profile. I want to walk you through some of these varieties of calathea that I have and tell you some things I've learned about them. But first, I want to thank our sponsor of today's video, Proven Winners. They have cultivated all of the beautiful plants that you see here today. I just got back from their greenhouse and I have to say, plant friends, they are taking houseplant care to the next level. They've got this very fancy greenhouse. They're cultivating very specific premium plant genetics and the variety that they have is incredible. I mean, look at all the amazing plants on this table. It's stunning and I'm so excited to be partnering with them on today's video. So next time you're at your garden center, look for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy tag. Another very cool thing about the Proven Winners tags is that they keep the plant Latin on the tag. I'm a plant nerd. I love that little fact about them. And let me know in the comments what Proven Winners Leaf Joy plant you bring home with you. All right, let's walk our way through some of these plants. So First off, the rattlesnake calathea. This Latin is calathea insignis. Fun, interesting fact about the calathea genus, it got renamed in the Latin world to gopertia. We're just going to keep calling this calathea, but if you're a plant nerd, fun fact about calathea. Um, technically, this is gopertia insignis, but anyway, you see this plant at a lot of plant shop. Rattlesnake plant for its really cool shaped leaves. It's got the really cool purple undersides. I just think it's so beautiful. It gets so lush, so big. It's nice and compact. It stays really short and low, so it's great for shelves. I'm going to be putting this in the shelf behind my bookcase. I can't wait. Love you, rattlesnake. Next, let's move on to the star of the show, the Calathea orbifolia. This plant had such a moment on Instagram a while ago. And it's because these beautiful leaves, it's probably hard to come up on camera, but they're so iridescent. It's like they're painted almost with this like silver stripe. They're so beautiful. And to me, like this is just a very gentle, sweet plant. This plant has like a very sweet energy about it. I don't know. I just think she's such a stunner. She's so beautiful. And if you give this girl a lot of humidity, it gets really robust and so beautiful. But you'll notice that her leaves are very thin. Like you need humidity if you want to care for this plant. Okay, the Calathea Diamond Dazzler White Star. So this is, I think, Calathea Majestica Diamond Dazzler. Um, this plant, I feel like, is more subtle than some of the other calatheas that have like bright pinks and purples. I think this is a very posh plant. It's it's a little more subtle. It's very cute. I mean, it has this beautiful pinstripe. It still has those beautiful purple undersides. I think it's really beautiful. It's a little taller, so you can still put it on a bookshelf, or you could like use this as a statement plant in the middle of a you know in the middle of your coffee table or something. And I love the pink the pink variegation on this plant alongside the white and that there's a different amount of pink and white variegation in each leaf. I just think that's so cool. All right. The star of the show, this baby, she's going to be your statement plant in a major way, right? Obviously she's so tall, but look at these leaves. I This is Calathea picturata and she's so beautiful. I mean, purple stems, purple undersides of the leaves, but I kind of love the simplicity of this leaf. I love the kind of dark green crown that each wear, each leaf wears. This minty green is, is such a hot color in, in the houseplant world right now. And I just think she's so beautiful. She's going to live on in the center of my coffee table which is two feet from a western facing window so she's going to get bright and direct light and I just want her to clump and grow and make the most robust plants you can see actually we have some new growth coming in the clumping growth that they do you're just going to keep getting new shoots popping out over and over and over again until this is just like packed until it's packed and the stems have variegation the stems are both green and purple which I just think is so beautiful so plant friends, tell me, which one's your favorite? Are you an Orbifolia plant parent? Are you a Picturata plant parent? I feel like for me, it's tied between these two. I mean, this really had me in a chokehold when it was making its moment on Instagram, but I'm kind of falling in love with this plant. I think especially too, because I've already resuscitated her once. We've already bonded. Let me know in the comments which plant you like the most. Please like, subscribe, thumbs up, do all the things that you know the YouTube algorithm likes to keep these videos coming. I'm having so much fun making them for you. Thank you again to Proven Winners, Leaf Joy for sponsoring. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy.